Hey, and welcome to a special E3 episode of Rocky Mountain Gamers. I'm Mark Cameron. And I'm Elb Evans. And we're just having a great time this week because games. There's just games everywhere. Uh, We're on the second day of E3 officially, um, but several days into the game announcements, of course. And uh, yesterday was a little bit slow, gotta say. Mostly Ubisoft, um, not a lot else. I mean, the, we had a Gearbox presentation. Uh, the most no interesting things there were uh, Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which we already covered, and then scenes from the Borderlands movie, which looks cool, but we actually didn't really get to see anything. They're keeping it hush-hush, but we got to see Kevin Hart, and we got to see Eli Roth, the director, so that was fun. Um, what do you think of all the Gearbox stuff? Again, it was kind of a non-presentation presentation. <laughs> We'd seen the interesting stuff already, I think. Um, I think so too. And, uh, and I think my thing was I wanted to see more and was really hoping for more. And it turned out to be nothing. So Yeah, I want to see more Tiny Tina. Coming, coming soon, I suppose. Excited about what will come. I, I, I still like the idea of a high fantasy themed looter shooter. Absolutely, yeah. So that makes me happy. And then there was Ubisoft, and Ubisoft um, was okay. It, it didn't have as much substance as some years, which is understandable. Um, they talked about Assassin's Creed Valhalla and the fact that they're going to support that with DLC into a second year. And yes. I thought that was cool. Mm-hmm. Um, they're already, you know, they already planned so much DLC, and they did that with Odyssey. They had a ton of DLC, but it's usually only during the one year after, and then they kind of start moving forward. Yeah, two years of DLC is pretty. Uh, that's pretty thorough. That's a it, lot. It is. They they were touting the fact that it's the it was the best received Assassin's Creed ever, and. You know, I can understand that. It is, it's a really solid game. Uh, I, I love having a female protagonist, uh, which was my choice was to have a female protagonist. Uh, kind of made it different and just, it's just a lot of fun. Um, so I look forward to seeing what they do with the franchise next, but I'm not in a hurry for it. Oh, uh, definitely. It seems like there's enough content to keep us all busy for a while. Um, and I, I don't need a new Assassin's Creed every year. No. Um, this one is is really good, and uh, the fact that they're going to keep supporting it, I I love that. Um, I, I'm eager to see what the DLC looks like. Definitely, and they did announce some DLC coming shortly for uh, Watch Dogs Legion, which sadly I haven't played enough of, but I've enjoyed what I have played. Um, seems like several of Ubisoft's games last year, Watch Dogs Legions. And especially Immortals Phoenix Rising didn't get the love I thought they should have. Yeah, I mean, I've heard nothing but good things about Immortals. Um, It's definitely on my playlist. It it looks incredible. It was one of my favorite games last year. It was in my top two or three for the whole year. And it was just just so brilliant to play. Um, The DLC was fantastic. It's one of those games I will actually replay, which I don't do a lot of, um, but it didn't sell. Do you, do you think it didn't sell? Like, it feels like it was well received and people are talking about it. And people, whoever played it, seemed to like it, but I've heard the sales were not great. Really? And it had one of the best features I've seen on a game in a long time, which is I have it both on, I got an early code on uh, Xbox. And then I, I picked it up myself for my Switch. Yes. And you can actually save the game on Xbox, go to your Switch, if you're logged into the Ubisoft network, and pick up the game from where you left off. And I love that. There are not many games that have done that, that have incorporated that. I don't think they got enough credit for that. Um, but what a brilliant feature. Yeah, all games need to do that. I, I don't see why they can't do that. Yeah, if they're cross-platform, it's fantastic. 
then I could have my 4K version of it and I could play it on the go. Absolutely. It's phenomenal. Love it. You know, that's that's one of the few good reasons I've ever heard double dip. <laughs> so so that was, you know, the kind of predictable side. And then we got a few new announcements from Ubisoft that were anywhere from amazing to different. Just depends on what what you're thinking. I, I think I heard Tom Clancy spinning in his grave. God rest his soul. <laughs> Uh, Rainbow Six Extraction, where your Rainbow Six team now fights aliens. Yeah, and you know what? That made it interesting to me, um, and it made me want to play it. Like, I'm not a huge Rainbow Six fan by any means. Like, it's not that I dislike the series. It's just that it never really appealed to me. And now I've seen them, like, squad-based fighting aliens, and I'm like, hmm, that's something I could see myself playing, actually. I don't think it looks bad by any stretch. It, it, it looks like a fun game. I just, you know, Tom Clancy was always about the realism, the right. minutia when he wrote and the technical aspects. They were always so correct and so well-grounded. And it just, to me, doesn't seem right for the franchise yeah i mean i guess that's them taking the franchise in a in a new direction because that's what it is now it's a franchise it's not it's true what it once was it's not what it started as um and i think they're trying to take it and make it interesting and relevant i mean you how much more can you do kind of the same thing year after year this is something new and something different with the same feeling of the franchise um, I'm interested to see how it's received, to be honest. Yeah, it, it'll be interesting to see how it goes. And then, um, which this leaked just before the show yesterday morning, <laughs> but yeah. but not too far before at least, uh, Mario plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope, a sequel to the Mario plus Rabbids Kingdom Battle uh, from several years ago. And I couldn't be happier. That was such an amazing game. Mario meets XCOM uh, with quirky humor, the Rabbids characters. Uh, it shouldn't have worked then, but it really, really did. And, you know, if that was the Mario Rabbids version of Super Mario World, this will be the, the Mario plus Rabbids version of Super Mario Galaxy. <laughs> totally. You get to go into space. Um literally i cannot wait yeah i mean just so fun totally um i could have done without the leak it's almost <laughs> too bad that it leaked you know me too because that was quite in my opinion that was uh, i know it wasn't the announcement necessarily but to me it was one of the bigger or biggest announcements and uh and so it sucks when i get spoiled like that i agree um, but, you know, it looks so good, and I'm just so happy that it's happening, that it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and the original game, like, people were, you know, people were responding to me on Twitter and whatnot, um, surprised that it was getting a sequel. And I don't know if enough people know, but the original Mario plus Rabbids sold like crazy. Like, it, it, it was critically well-received. It's still selling well. Um, it's a fantastic game. And uh, so to warrant a sequel is, is a no-brainer, actually. Um, and I think that this sequel has the potential to do even better. Looks uh, like they've incorporated some RPG elements, too. It felt very RPG to me, just watching the, watching the trailer and, like, <laughs> seeing the screenshots and whatnot. Um, it really feels like they're treating the franchise well. Like, they must have some help, I think, from Nintendo, just making sure everything oh, yeah. lines up nicely with with the you know with the franchise i think I'm, anything that actually has mario in it has to have miyamoto's seal of approval i, I think i'm not yeah. mistaken yeah i mean it, it looks like it was made by nintendo like yeah it, it does it has that quality it has the you know the right way to handle the characters i'm very excited for this one um i already have my pre-order in <laughs> me too <laughs> maybe i'll finish this one even although I will be happy to change my pre-order to a collector's edition if they do a cool one like last time. 
except for instead of statues, let's make them amiibos. I was going to say I would kill for some <laughs> Mario Plus Rabbids Sparks of Hope amiibo. Make it happen, Nintendo. Yes, please. <laughs> and then Ubisoft's last announcement, which kind of came out of left field, and a lot of people are going to love this. A lot. I'm not one of them. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora. Hey, um, the first Avatars thing in a while. <laughs> it is, and there are, is a string of movies coming out. Eventually, maybe. Uh, okay. um, well, some of them are shot already. Uh, and I think I think they start coming out next year. Finally. Um, the area at the Pandora area at Disney World in Animal Kingdom uh, draws a nice crowd. Am I the only person out there who just really disliked that movie? I I don't know that I would say I disliked it. Um, I don't completely understand how big it's become. It was it was a entertaining movie. Um, Great three D. Absolutely, it was it was entertaining to me. So it's not like it was I didn't enjoy it or I thought it was bad or anything. Um, but I'm not fervent about it. I'm not, you know, I don't need a ton more, but it sounds like there's a ton more coming. So this actually makes it a fairly big announcement, I think. I, I think it does. I think it does. And there hasn't been uh, a big AAA Avatar game. And it certainly looked beautiful. It did, and, yeah. And, you know, I don't like to bag on other people's fandom. If you like Avatar, you know, you like Avatar, and I hope this game gives you the kind of thrill of a movie gives you. It's just like, I feel left out because I just didn't like that <laughs> movie. But the game looks good. I think you have to at least admit that. It does. Uh, I could see that being a lot of fun just from what I've seen so far. Yeah, from a design standpoint, it looks spot on. Yeah. So I can and, get on board And that. it might be a whole lot of fun uh, fighting against hovercraft helicopter things while on the back of these dragonish things uh and using bows and arrows that could it could be a lot of fun but uh it's avatar you know <laughs> avatar lost me when he named the rare substance they were mining unobtainium mm. and it was like the scratch of dragging a needle across a record player <laughs> they that's said fair. unobtainium and they lost me yeah that's fair i hear that <laughs> but, but i hope it does well i hope avatar fans like it i know there's a lot of avatar fans out there in the world and you know i'm the fan of I, things that that a lot of people don't like so i hope it's a great game for you yeah absolutely so that was ubisoft and yesterday um went well uh i think it was a good start and then today we woke up and we got the Microsoft presser. And it seems like, to me, the less that Sony does during an E3, the bigger guns Microsoft pulls out. I felt like this was possibly, if not one of the better, the best Microsoft um, E3 presentation i've ever seen um it's not that there was anything that like completely went wild it's just that the whole thing was good it was yeah it was just uh, solid after solid after solid absolutely um, if you didn't like what they were showing you could wait a minute and a half and they'd be showing something different that you than you would like yeah it was it was fast paced um the games all looked good there was a lot of new reveals um or release dates there was um yeah, almost everything is coming to game pass which is the best deal in gaming pretty much yeah let's before we go into any specific games let's talk about that they showed 30 games at the microsoft presser and 27 of them are going to be on game pass day one yeah that's huge and it really shows microsoft's um kind of game plan here to get everybody on Game Pass, and uh, I would, you know, it would be tough to find a reason not to be on Game Pass right now. 
Yeah, there was there was a uh, uh, one of the guys on IGN. I'm sorry, I don't know which one. I, I I'm not not giving you credit on purpose. Um, but one of the guys at IGN said, if if you are not admitting that Game Pass is a a good buy anymore, then you just have an axe to grind. Yeah, and I think that's true. It, it is undeniably for what is it, twenty bucks a month. Yeah, that's um, after you get your one to three free months that you can get pretty easily for 20 bucks a month, which is the price of, you know, four games a year. Yeah, 25% of a new game. kind Yeah, of thing, four so. games a year. Yeah. Um, you, you, you can play a lot. You could play all year. You oh, may not sure. get absolutely everything you want on day one, but you're going to get a lot. You're and you're gonna whole get the, lot. The big games. You're gonna get the blockbusters, which is that's what I think really makes it incredible. Is you're, you're getting the big games day one, and for an extra five bucks, you get all the EA games. Mm -hmm. Um, a couple of the nice uh, announcements for Game Pass. They're putting up the latest Yakuza game, like a dragon. Mm -hmm. So you can play the entire Yakuza saga from zero through six. And like a dragon. Um, and trust me, that'll keep you busy for a year. <laughs> Easily. Those, those seven games, you know, you'll wake up, it'll be 2023. And that's a good year, too. They're all amazing. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's great. And Hades, uh, what a lot of people thought were the, was the game of the year last year on Switch. Not just the Switch game of the year, though. The game of the year. Um, is now coming to both Xbox and PS4, PS5, but specifically it's coming to Xbox Game Pass. Yes, and that's an absolute must play. Um, I double dipped and bought myself another copy of it <laughs> on PS5 though, because I can get my Xbox on, on Game Pass. Right. And I'm going to play some more of that game, man. What a fantastic game. I want to see what that game looks like in 4K. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm dying for that. There, is it August that it's releasing? I believe so. Yeah. Oh, I don't man. have the little chart in front of me, but I believe so. It's, e it's either August or early September that that's coming we'll out. Get, uh, I wonder if we'll get any way to cross, uh, like, move staves over. That would be nice. I haven't I heard anything, that. but we'll cross our fingers. <laughs> but there's going to be new games releasing almost weekly. Good games from August into December on Great. Game Pass. Um, and then we got, uh, and I believe everything I'm mentioning, we aren't, we aren't going to cover all the games because there's just not enough time, but, but we're going to talk about some of the ones we really like. And we got to start with Halo Infinite. They no. showed off the multiplayer, which looked fantastic. Uh, I'm not a big Halo multiplayer guy. I usually just play the, the campaigns, but uh, it, it looks like the best multiplayer that I've seen. Looks like they have some of the iconic maps there. If I'm recognizing them, they must be iconic because <laughs> <laughs> I haven't put an, I haven't put my hours in there. Um, and for the first time in the history of the series, you're going to be able to play the multiplayer for free. Yeah, which is tremendous. It, it really looks good. Like the multiplayer, they showed kind of a wide variety of um, scenarios for the multiplayer. And I mean, it looks amazing. Like It looks like Halo again, um, but next gen Halo. And, uh, and they brought all the bells and whistles, you know, all the weapons, all the vehicles, all the scenarios. Oh, the Warthog looked fantastic. They got everything in there. So it, honestly feels like they're kind of trying to create like the perfect halo right kind of like how smash brothers on switch is you know everything um it feels like they're doing with the multiplayer for halo infinite yeah and uh the people who were worried and, that the multiplayer yeah. wouldn't be available when the game releases um they're saying it will be they haven't given a release date which that surprised me a lot Yes. That they didn't nail down a release date, but they are still saying 2021. 
Right. And did they did they narrow it down at all? Did they say uh, holiday 2021? Or? They said holiday 2021. Holiday 2021. So okay. that could be anything from October to December. Right. But uh, I think that that's a function of them polishing it up as fast as they can. Yeah, I mean, I, I want them to take their time because I want this game to be good. Absolutely. And then we we went from, well, well, they didn't start out with Halo. We started out with Halo. Mm-hmm. They actually opened up with Starfield. Right. Uh, the Bethesda game, we've all been waiting freaking forever for more <laughs> details on. And it looks good. Uh, the uh, Bethesda execs were describing it. Uh, there were two descriptions. One was Skyrim in space. And the other was a Han Solo simulator. <laughs> and I'm good with both of those. I was going to say, I'll take either of those. That's that's all you need to tell me. It, it, it looks just fantastic. What I really liked, they showed the character sitting down at the controls of the ship. And it looked like what I would picture controls of a spaceship would actually be absolutely Big and complex super complex yeah now that doesn't mean we're going to be getting one of those giant capcom controllers i don't remember the game <laughs> that came with i remember uh, those on xbox uh the big mech game that had the 150 dollars controller that did <laughs> everything um all of those buttons and stuff may not be functional but it made me feel like, oh, that's a spaceship. That's yeah. that's where that is. Um, and and there we go from one extreme to the other. We have uh, Microsoft saying Halo is going to come out this year. Didn't give a release date. Starfield, we got a release date. 11, 11, 22. Right. So almost so 18 months away. Yeah. <laughs> Still got a ways to go on that one. Um, <laughs> and that's okay. It was it was just, uh, it was amusing to me to see them assign a date so far down the road. And totally. Um, I'm, I'm good with them taking their time <laughs> on their games again, though, because, you know, I mean, Fallout 76, another game they kind of featured prominently today. Um, again, kind of maybe released too early um, and it's sort of coming into its own now. So if they want to take a bit of time with Starfield and make sure it's polished and shining, then power to them. I will, I will wait for the finished product. Historically, Bethesda games are wonderful and buggy. Yeah. And yes. it comes from, comes from being PC programmers where it's just where they really started. Um, so they've had the luxury of always being able to patch their games Mm -hmm. and uh always needing to hopefully after fallout 76 um they've taken a step back and go oh went you know oh well maybe we can do a little better job from the outset with starfield maybe with elder scrolls 6 so i feel like this release (laughs) date kind of solidifies that they've kind of learn from that i hope so i think we're going to see a a very polished product i hope so um from starfield uh my pleasant surprise was the new expansion to sea of thieves Mm. and for those who don't know me very well i'm a huge disney fan (laughs) and the new pirate's life expansion is uh, Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean, complete with Jack Sparrow. And that just made me happy, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, my kids are playing <laughs> Sea of Thieves right now, and they love it. I mean, it's it's a fun pirate game, you know? And I've only played a little. Like Have you played it yet? A little bit. Just, yeah. you know, I played with it a little bit when it was early on, and I haven't gone back to it mostly for time purposes. But I'll tell you what, this comes out soon, nine days. Yeah. Uh, June 22nd, and I think I'm going to fire it up and check it out. I'll, I'll be secondhand playing it, so I'm going to sit down and watch the kids play it, I think. Um, and, and it looks fun, again, like... It does. And it looks like it fits right in, too. 
oh again jack sparrow in a in a sea of thieves game like that makes so much sense it does so so that was neat and then uh on the trend of releasing things uh and showing things that are releasing soon we have 12 minutes that's releasing yes. august 19th and i know you're looking forward to that one yeah, I have been. I mean, that's been one of those ones that we've been waiting for a release date for a while. Um, that's an Annapurna interactive um, game. And I mean, that they make some pretty interesting games that end up being super high quality. Um, and to have it on Game Pass day one, that's going to make it a must play for me. Absolutely. Um... So I'm glad to a lot of people were glad to have a release date on that. And that's not too far away. No, not at all. Uh, and I, you know, I've had less luck than you with time loop puzzlers. Um, Majora's Mask is one of the banes of my existence. <laughs> um, but I, I, I look forward to checking this one out. And yeah, I mean, a week, a week later, one week, Psychonauts 2 from Double Fine. Yes. And it was, that's, that's a sequel. I didn't know if we were ever going to get. And Feels like it's been on deck for a while. Yeah. And it has been on deck for a while. Game Informer magazine uh, did a blowout on Double Fine and uh, on Psychonauts 2, this last issue. Uh, if you're interested, go on their website or pick up a copy of their magazine. They really, really did a fantastic job. A uh, big interview with Tim Schafer, the whole deal. Um, but I loved the first Psychonauts game. I thought it, I thought that was one of those games that was just it was received well, it was well loved, and it just it didn't lead anywhere. It took forever to get a sequel. Yeah, um, and I couldn't be happier that the sequel is now coming out. And I feel like I'm I'm off base here. It's one of those. Uh, embarrassing things i've never played the original psychonauts besides or having absolutely no reason not to i'm sure i own it <laughs> it's just sat there in my backlog for so long so and it's on modern systems too it is absolutely on modern systems there's no reason for me to have <laughs> not played it yet <laughs> I, look, so I look forward to getting your reaction when you, when you peek into it or the sequel well, I'm hoping I'll play the sequel, love it, and go back and go back to the roots, right? Right. So that's what I'm looking forward to. That's so good. Mm -hmm. And see, see, we're beat. This is beat up Babs Night. Yeah. One of the games he hasn't played. Uh, yeah, coming on September 23rd, we have Diablo 2 <laughs> re uh, resurrected. And Babs told me earlier, he's not played Diablo 2. He only played Diablo 3. That's another embarrassing one for me. And I didn't even play Diablo 3 until the Switch version came out. So I was way behind on that one too. These are, were primarily PC games. So we got to let you slide a little bit. You've always been a console gamer. That's true. And I've, I've always, you know, gone both ways, console and PC. So uh, Diablo 2 is the only role-playing game I've played more than twice. And you've made it very clear to me that this is a game I need to play. Yeah, I've, I've gone through it four times. Four times. Including the DLC. Wow. And I don't play games that, you know, I don't replay games that often. I always have games to play. I always have a backlog. Uh, the infamous backlog. Uh, I think the first merchandise uh, we're going to do for our channel, if, if people like the idea, I think we're going to make up t-shirts that say what's in your backlog. <laughs> let them wonder i don't think i can get a t-shirt big enough to just... <laughs> it's just a conversation starter what's in your backlog um but diablo 2 is uh well was for the time perfection in action role playing and they, they couldn't match that with diablo 3 diablo 3 is a great game but they could not get to what diablo 2 was and uh to see a remastered version of that just thrills me. And then uh, a couple of nice other things that, that they showed during the main body 
at Microsoft. They had a non-trailer trailer for Outer Worlds 2. <laughs> that was one of my favorite trailers today, just because of how much fun they made of themselves. Yeah, it was just a trailer. It's very. Yeah, I'll, I'll put a link in the description below. I'll put a link to it uh, <laughs> on YouTube because you have to listen to it. Just watching it doesn't do it. Totally. You have to listen to it. Um, so so jump over there and see what they had to say about outer the Outer Worlds too. And if it's anywhere near as good as the first one, I'm looking forward to it. Oh, I think um, everyone's looking forward to it for sure. And then we have uh, Ayudan Chronicles. Uh, if I'm saying that right, we debated it before the show how to pronounce it. We're not sure. Um, e I Y. Uh, you know, I have a master's in English and it doesn't work for me. Uh, so Ayudan Chronicle, uh, 100 Heroes, has been pushed from 2022 to 2023. Uh, there was a big Kickstarter. It's like the third most successful game on a Kickstarter at four and a half million dollars. Yeah. And then there's going to be a, a prequel game that is going to come out in 2022, uh, Ayudan Chronicle Rising. Uh, right. And you're going to get to know some of those hundred characters before you start your big uh, Siukadin type role playing game. And so I think those are are well worth looking forward to they look incredible this has been one of my most anticipated games ever since i seen that it was even a thing um how did you pronounce that ayudin sui sui Koden? oh see so you so is that actually how it's pronounced i have no idea i don't speak japanese I, i've been pronouncing it sukoden my whole life and uh I don't know if that's correct or not. <laughs> and I'm probably hammered for for pronouncing it like that, but drop a drop a note in the comments. Let us know how it's actually pronounced. Uh if you actually know, don't make shit up and get us to get it wrong a different way. <laughs> um yeah, I, I pronounce it Siukadin, but I, I don't know. It doesn't really matter. The fact of the matter is this looks exactly like it brought into now. And I've been waiting for this for way, way too long. So <laughs> I, that was hilariously probably the most exciting game for me personally um, of the whole presentation, which is crazy because there was some incredible games shown. It's just personally, I've been waiting for this for a long time. Yeah, it made me made me sit up, sit forward and, and watch carefully. Uh, yeah. The footage is just beautiful. Um, very stylized. And then we got uh, we got two surprise games, mm -hmm. which was fun. Uh, the first being, which I did not expect to see this. Uh, honestly, I expected we'd see the next iteration of Forza in some way of the mainline game, and instead we got Forza Horizon Five, uh, which is releasing November 9th. and. Is it me or is that the most insane looking game? It looks like you're driving in a picture. It's not just you. That looks beautiful. I, I literally can't put it any other way. It looks phenomenal. Like that's next gen car racing. Um, I wanted to play it just to enjoy the scenery. Like I don't want to race anybody or... <laughs> game anything i just want to drive around and you know watch the scenery it's beautiful in the horizon games you can do that too so i know not that i love the horizon series um this this one is set in mexico and i think that's going to be fantastic because uh a lot of people don't realize how big and beautiful mexico is and how diverse the landscapes there are and, and what diverse country, what a diverse country it is. Um, and I think it'll be able to show that off, show off the cities and the, and the countryside and the, the ancient ruins and, and everything that Mexico has to offer uh, from a scenic standpoint. Mm -hmm. um, I, th I think it's going to be great. And they showed a little bit of everything. Um, yeah. Uh, when I was tweeting about it, I took four screenshots and each one of them had a different kind of locale and vehicle and 
you know, premise of actually what was happening in the screenshot. And each one of them could have been its its own game in a sense. Isn't that great? Um, and that was only four of them. There was multitudes more of that. Um, and they were talking about AI systems helping match make and like, it's just, I'm, I'm amazed that first of all, this was announced. And second of all, that it's coming so soon. Um, yeah. November 9th, like we got a year and a half till Starfield, but Forza Horizon 5 is coming out November 9th. Um, incredible. I, I'm going to play this for sure. Absolutely. And then the last big game uh, that Microsoft showed off, Bethesda showed off, uh, Redfall, a new Arcane Studios game. And, uh, you know, Arcane Studios, Prey, Dishonored, um, I love their stuff. And this uh, you got vampires and vampire hunters. You have uh, a diverse cast of characters. It looks like one of the leaders is just this strong, proud black woman. And um, my niece and her children, my great niece, my great nephew uh, are black. And I've been wanting some kind of awesome representation for her. She's a horror fan. Uh, and she has an Xbox Series X, thanks to her husband. So I'm going to make sure she plays this. Yeah, it looked really different. Um, just the style of it felt kind of cartoony, but... Um, but in a good way. Yeah, absolutely a good way. Um, I was not expecting this, I guess. And it doesn't look like anything I've played before. Um, and they showed a fair bit of it too yeah they did which is neat so i mean it has the it has the studio behind it um and they saved it for the end for a reason like i think that they know that this is going to be a special game um i'm absolutely interested to see more about how it works and and whatnot uh, like you said vampires you can't really go too wrong with that oh uh, sure you can didn't you ever hear of the twilight yeah. movies the vampires sparkle I've repressed that in some way. Shape. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know These what you're These vampires about. <laughs> do not sparkle. These vampires look badass. Yeah, it looked like a badass game, actually. And it looked funny. Like, they've, they've infused a sense of humor into it as well. Yeah. Um, it looks like something that would be a lot of fun to play. And, uh, yeah, I was pleasantly surprised. And that's <laughs> about a year out. That's summer of 22. Yeah, it was a good way to cap off the presentation, in my opinion. I agree. I agree. I think they did a good job. Overall, I think the Microsoft presentation was fantastic. It was amazing. Very well done. Fast-paced. Moved through a lot of good stuff. Release dates, game pass. Well done, Microsoft. Absolutely. And then we went to Square Enix. And uh, Lee and I decided to do a podcast together because... In a lot of ways, we're very alike. Mm -hmm. We like to play the same kinds of games and, and this and that. But that doesn't mean we always agree. <laughs> Case <laughs> in does. point, the Square Enix press conference. Yeah, I mean, I think we go back and forth on this one. Um, you thought it was pretty good. I thought, it, yeah, I thought it was decent. Yeah, and, and it was decent. Um, for me, it was a little bit disappointing. I think maybe I had too much in my mind of what it could be and what we might see. Um, and it didn't really hit that for me. Um, I, the, I think what happened for me too, is that it started off strong with um, the great game. And then it went into um, the final fantasy re, you know, pixel remasters and they're <laughs> only for mobile and steam again, at this point that could change. At this right. Point. Um, but that just slayed me. That just kicked me down. I really want these games on the <laughs> Switch. And I was excited. And I was, you know, the rumors were like, yeah, they're coming to the Switch. And then just mobile and Steam. <laughs> was, I, I offered, I offered I Lee a $20 yes. bet that they make it to Steam within a year of their release on mobile and uh, uh, PC. But he has not taken me up on that bet yet. No, I, I think you're right. I'm cautiously optimistic that you're right um that they'll make it to the switch eventually in other platforms 
But for now, I'm severely the wind has been taken out of my sails there. I the, think I think the reason they're they're announcing it separately the way they are is because on mobile and PC they are releasing as single games. Right. And their releases are spread out a little bit. And I think when you see them come to consoles, they're going to come in packages. I oh, think you'll I see one through three and four through six come as a package, um, as two separate packages. And uh, it'll be offered that way instead of piecemeal. I would buy those so fast. Oh, I yeah. Hope that happens. I'd love, and I, I hope they make sure there's physical editions. Yeah, for sure. But I think they'll do like they did with Dragon Warrior 1 through 3, which mm. I still don't have my 4 through 6. <laughs> That's true. Where is that now? I'm going to keep pushing for it. But uh, I, I, I think we'll see that. Um, but like you said, the sh it opened solid. Mm -hmm. um, I think you were a little bit disappointed on how much time they spent on the opening game. Almost half their show. Yeah, I mean, the opening game, again, the Marvel Guardians of the Galaxy, looks incredible. It does look amazing. And I was pumped to see the announcement. But they kept playing it for 20-some minutes afterwards. Um, yeah, it was right at 20 minutes. And in a 40-minute presentation that I was expecting, you know, kind of, especially after just coming out of the Microsoft Bethesda, where it was like hit after hit after hit. Um, it really didn't do much to <laughs> keep I me I think it messed your pacing up quite a bit. It totally messed my pacing up big time. Um, it made my show so far. Uh, I love Guardians of the Galaxy. I've loved them since before the movie. Certainly love them a lot since the movie. They're even my wife's favorite Marvel movies. And... Um, I think I like the way they went with the art style. It's not so close like they did with the Avengers, like uh, Crystal Dynamics. The the uh, characters look just a little bit too much like the actors without looking like the actors. That's not as much of a problem in Guardians. I mean, Peter Quill looks nothing like Chris Pratt. Right. Um, the Gamora looks different. The Drax looks different. Um, rah, Rocket looks a little different. He's got a little bit of a, a hippie, hippie beard going with beads. And, uh, and Groot looks like Groot. But it looks funny. It looks like they're incorporating the music like the movies did. And they've licensed a bunch of 80s music, which is true to my heart. Um, the action looks fast, and it looks like there's going to be some decision making, which hopefully means there's going to be some branching paths. Mm -hmm. And uh, you do have indirect control of the other heroes, even though you're just playing as Peter Quill. It's a single person game, which is what I wanted out of a Guardians of the Galaxy single or, or two player co op. I didn't want one of these Avengers style games. Right. Um, and to trump that all off, it's coming out October 26th. Right. So it's right around the corner. Yes. Um, I couldn't be happier. I was like, all right, now I just need a good Nintendo presentation. I'm happy. Uh, Nothing, totally. Nobody else can disappoint me. So, so I didn't mind the 20 minutes there. Um, yeah. And I think I'm going to go back and rewatch all 20 minutes, too. See, I'm excited about a Guardians of the Galaxy game because like you, I love the Guardians of the Galaxy. And like you, they're incorporating the music, which to me is a huge game changer. Um, and I loved seeing that. Um, it is coming out soon. And like you said, the most important or a big important part for me is that it does look to be a single player campaign. Um, so they definitely checked all the boxes of what I would want. From a Guardians of the Galaxy game, um, I've already put in my pre-order for sure. Like, I, I'm definitely playing this. Had to get the steel uh, case. Totally, I'm I'm pumped for it. But during E3, I don't want to see 20 minutes of game. <laughs> I want to see game after game after release date after you know update. I want to see it all fast and kind of furious. Um, 
but it was it was good what they showed for sure well then we got a swath of the square enix mobile games which neither of us care about particularly oh maybe and... the final fantasy 7 game um <laughs> they were they were quick to go through that so i don't know yeah and then we got a game we do agree upon uh babylon's fall from platinum games i love platinum games don't you love platinum games i do love platinum games actually. why the hell does this look so bad i i I was having a hard time pinning that down and I actually sat and thought about it a bit. I think my problem with it is it looks like Godfall, but with worse graphics somehow. You know, the, I think that the backgrounds are gorgeous. The backgrounds? Those watercolor are... looking backgrounds. and it, But it looks like they took this brawler and dropped it in front of these backgrounds and it doesn't go and i don't need the graphics to be perfect by any means um i will happily play a game that you know looks average but plays really well um i i wasn't super sold on the gameplay either mm -hmm. um i think maybe i need to see a little bit more before i make any um judgments on it but it's definitely not the trailer itself felt boring to me. It I didn't feel like a platinum games game. Yeah. It, it did felt not have that boring. hook. Yeah. You know, that seemed to be missing. Um, I hope it's still just early. I don't yes. I think it's a 2022 game. So um, but like Guardians of the Galaxy looked great. Mm -hmm. I'm not gonna say it looked perfect. The character designs still had a little bit of an edge to them and it wasn't the smoothest and I, I attribute that to it not being done yet but um even if it came out looking like that it wouldn't bother me and it didn't need to look perfect it no. felt right it felt like a guardians of the galaxy game you can right. see the humor infused they had music that was great uh the gameplay looked fun um it felt like a great announce whereas babylon's fall felt like uh just muted uh understated just yeah, just not, there. not exciting but they like you said they still have time um i could definitely change my mind on this but what i what i felt like they showed today did not sell it for me i agree um and then we got one more game which which really looks interesting mm -hmm. it's a complete departure for its franchise and that's stranger of paradise final fantasy origin coming out next year right and it is a team up with uh team ninja uh, uh koi tecmo and square enix it is a action-based role-playing game heavy on the action side almost looks like a souls game mm -hmm. and based in i think it's a prequel you're saying to final fantasy one which yeah, we find out how chaos comes about yes chaos lots of chaos talk today in that in that trailer yeah, there is uh, but i'm i'm optimistic i'm interested for sure in this i don't think it looked uh as well as i wanted it to look um and there's some odd design features there but it's a final fantasy game and it's set right before final fantasy one and you're seeing some of the same characters. You got Garland, um, right? Chaos. I am very interested in where this could go. I don't know that what I've seen today completely sold me on it, uh, and I can't play the demo because <laughs> downloaded the demo and it didn't work. Uh, they're broke, having issues, but they're working on that. Chaos broke it, um, but I'm absolutely interested to see where this goes, and I have a funny feeling it may end up being really cool and I, I really hope it is i agree i agree um so i enjoyed the the square enix presentation i get what you're coming from um they left a lot out uh no update on final fantasy 16 uh, a yeah. lot of things they didn't update um but i think it was solid and i think uh 
I think they pushed Guardians of the Galaxy as much mm-hmm. as they did to kind of separate it from Avengers, which was on there. They showed some of the roadmap going forward with Avengers and uh, with the new Black Panther uh, story set up coming this summer, which, which looked good. Wakanda looked good. Um, but I, th- I think that they wanted to separate Guardians from Avengers and show how different it was. And maybe they went a little overboard there. Yeah, I mean, it feels to me like they're kind of, Square Enix right now is kind of separating what it's doing. Like, um, we've seen a bunch of new stuff at the Dragon Quest um, presentation. And I have a feeling we'll see some new stuff at the Nintendo presentation. And I think even possibly when Sony does whatever they're going to do, which they probably will do something, we might even see a little more there. Um, It feels kind of like things are a little bit separated amongst the uh, publishers and amongst the platforms. So I think they kind of had a focus today and they went with that, but there's still a lot that they're making that looks really cool. It does. It does. And, And they, you know, for everything they showed, there's two games they didn't. Um, and I, I think there's a lot to look forward to there. So do you think we'll see more Final Fantasy 16 from Sony? Um, I don't think we'll see a lot of Final Fantasy 16 till next year because it's so far off. Mm, could I be. think I think we're gonna what we're gonna see from Sony uh this summer is gonna be concentrating on the holidays mm. and what we're going to be able to experience this year. Right. Um the only things that happened after Square Enix really were the uh, there was a, a brief Warner show where they showed more Back for Blood, um, Left for Dead fanatics. You're going to have a ball. Uh, <laughs> I watched it in slight interest. Um, I played the heck out of Left for Dead when it first came out, and then you know kind of got bored with it and moved on. Um, so I, I can't say that overly thrills me, but it looks good. If that's what you're into, it looks good. Um, there was a PC gaming show, um, which the skits were actually kind of better than the games because there wasn't a lot in yeah. the games. Um, and then there was a future games gaming show. There was there was some stuff I liked there. There was uh, a, a really first good look at uh, eSports Boxing Club. And uh, I like what they're doing there with the rosters of boxers and the classic boxers. Uh, If they get the controls right, it looks like it'll be a good boxing game. And there's a game called Harold Halibut, which uh, it's an adventure game, looks like an adventure platformer. But what really got me there, uh, and I want to see the behind the scenes on this a little bit more, It's based on stop motion animation where they have actually made all of the figures. They have made all of the sets. They have used 3D scanners to put them into the game and then did motion capture for the animation. So you have this really, I mean, it really looks like stop motion animation, even though it's computer generated. And it's just really beautiful. Sounds amazing. Um, and then my my guilty pleasure of the day came from the Future Games show, uh, a game called Lake. And it looks like a Hallmark movie, which I'm a sap and I enjoy Hallmark movies. Roast me, if you will. <laughs> um, but it's it's a woman who leaves her job in the city to become a postal worker for her hometown and what transpires there. Uh, and you do your little postal route, and then you uh, have different activities in your off hours, and it's a little life simulator. Um, I have a distinct feeling there's a romance in there somewhere, and she has to decide if she's going back to the big city or if she's going to stay in the town. I am guessing on that part, but uh, if it's not, if that's not the crux of it, I'll be very disappointed. <laughs> and so uh and kind of fun graphics and and that was good so my guilty pleasure of the show so far is lake interesting i'm gonna have to look more into it because i'm a sap <laughs> a proud proud sap mm-hmm. um so we're 
we're through Summer Games Fest. We're through the first two days of E3. What are you really liking so far, Lee? You know, I'm really happy with what Microsoft did today. Um, I think it's a really big deal how much is coming to Game Pass. Um, I think that's going to be an interesting model moving forward for everyone, actually. Um, and I'm curious to see what that does for them, because that's kind of becoming their defining selling factor lately. So, I mean, I, I love what Microsoft did. Um, Square Enix, again, disappointed me a little bit, but I'm still very interested in, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy and praying for some Final Fantasy on Switch. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm having a blast with E3 so far. And uh, I feel like we're only about really just kind of halfway through. Um, I'm hoping the second half will even do better than the first half. It ain't over till the fat lady sings and it looks like the fat lady this year is Nintendo. Yeah, well, man. And leaving it to the end too is an interesting move this year because they usually um, usually go a little bit sooner, you know? You know, I was thinking about that. I'm thinking, why did they leave it to the end? They usually open the show. Mm -hmm. They do usually open the show on Tuesday morning. Ah, interesting. I think they just wanted to leave it on their Tuesday morning. Potentially. Doesn't you have to change anything in your calendar? It's Tuesday morning. Yeah, could... they're, they're always Tuesday morning before the show opens. Okay, the show started on a Saturday this year, so they're Tuesday morning on the last day of the show. Yeah, I mean, I'd be lying if I didn't say I wasn't incredibly excited for that. So. <laughs> oh, yeah, me too. Um, one thing we didn't talk about, and uh, I don't have a lot of details on it, so we will hit this later. But talking about Xbox Games pa Game Pass, um, Microsoft announced a couple of days ago, and it hasn't gotten a lot of buzz, that they're going to start incorporating Game Pass into some smart TVs. Mm, that's right. Where, yeah. where you will not need an Xbox to play Game Pass games. You'll just need the TV and a controller. And I feel like that's where they're going with this whole thing. Um, they want people on a subscription for Game Pass, and they want you to be able to play these games anywhere, at any time, on any device. Yeah, yeah I think that's fair, and uh, I, I think it's an interesting way to move forward. It is. It's different, and uh, it has a lot of potential if you start thinking about it. Definitely. Definitely. Well, my, my happy places in the show so far come from... Uh, I've had one each day. Elden Ring, as mm -hmm. much as I loathe the possible difficulty, Elden <laughs> Ring just looks beyond stunning. Um, and then yesterday, Mario plus Rabbids. Mm -hmm. um, I'll play that all day long. And then today, Guardians of the Galaxy. So those are, those are my three big games. There's other games that I think look great, but those are my three so far. Those are some good choices. Thank you. And I, I, I think your, your interest in Microsoft and uh, Game Pass is pretty good, too. Thank you. So it's only been a couple of days, so we're not going to talk about what we're playing because we're playing the same stuff. Uh, <laughs> and we're, we're watching E3. But uh, we'll, we'll wrap it here. Um, we'll have another show in two days on Tuesday. Um, and we'll cover Capcom is tomorrow. And we'll cover Nintendo and Bandai Namco and any other surprises that pop up in the meantime. So I hope everybody out there is enjoying E3. I hope you've seen some stuff you like and uh, are looking forward to what looks like it's going to be a pretty busy rest of 2021 as these uh, months start to fill in. Absolutely. looks like it's going to be a fun couple of days here too. I'm looking forward to Tuesday night and what could have changed since then. Yeah, we'll find out what we're talking about uh, on Tuesday morning, I think. I think so. So, well, for Rocky Mountain Gamer, I hope you're enjoying our shows. If so, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. We have a lot more coming. After we get through the shows, we're going to even start changing things up a little bit, and uh, we're going to have some fun. So until next time, this is Mark. This is El Babins. Thanks, guys.
Take it easy. Bye-bye.